Hello everyone, I'm your host, April Metzler for the RSVP Show, and you have tuned into my Focusing on God in the Music segment. My special guest today is Leland Philpot. He is a gospel hip-hop producer and artist, the owner of Babel Scatter Productions, and my brother in Christ. The main scripture we will be visiting about today is Matthew 5.14. There is a consecration that comes with being the light, a foundation that is set upon which we stand. What does that look like in action? What does it mean to have a balance in all aspects of our life? And how does God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit fit into the picture? Well, we talk about these things and more in this visit. So now's your opportunity to get your Bible, study pad, and a pencil or pen. And as always, we will be getting started here shortly by opening in prayer and inviting the Holy Spirit in to ensure that this visit is protected and blessed in His name for His glory. Thank you for joining everyone and welcome to another episode of the RSVP show. I'm your host April Metzler and we are here with a very special guest. His name is Leland Philpot. He is all over the music industry but just to name a few things and I'll let him expound on this. He is a music producer, gospel and hip-hop he has been on the radio. I'll let him do that drop here in a second. And he has also got his own record label. I mean, come on, on top of being a music artist. So this is a phenomenal, very experienced, well-rounded, highly talented gentleman that I have on the show today. And I am so glad that you are here for this. Thank you for being here, audience. And thank you, Leland. Absolutely. No problem. Thank you so much. So go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Just expound on, on all of those details for us. Absolutely. I'm a gospel hip-hop producer. I've been making music for a while now. We're, we're going to say a while. <laughs> and uh, you, you know, my latest project, Songs in the Mist, uh, debuted on Power 92 here in Chicago. So, um, you know, we, we had me and my partner at my record label, Label Scatter Productions. We're working hard on that for a couple months. And uh, we had we had recently released Songs in the Mist, the movie. We literally have a music video for every single song on the EP. So, uh, you know, uh, I hope, you know, through this, you know, we, uh, you guys can uh, check it out. Just type my name in on YouTube and you'll find all my stuff. Yeah, and we will be sending or sharing and posting all of his links and how you can connect with him on the comments of all of the shows as well as here on air. So just stay tuned for that at the end and we'll get you connected to Leland. Uh, before we start, though, we're going to go ahead and pray. So Leland, would you mind going ahead and leading us in prayer? Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray right now over this podcast, over this episode for the RSVP show. I pray for everyone listening, that they come to Christ, that they hear the word of God, they hear the spirit of God speaking to the churches, that they hear a genuine word, they hear genuine anointing, and they feel your presence as we speak and as we talk, Lord God. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Have mercy on this world. Let it, let, oh Lord, your glory flow through, oh Lord. Let there be a path, hallelujah. Let there be an opening that your glory can flow through, that people's lives can be changed and saved by the word of God. And I thank you, Father, that it is you who deserves all the glory. It is you that is our victory. I pray over this show. I pray, oh Lord, that the plan for her, hallelujah, for April's life and for her family's life and even for this show, I pray that the plan is revealed. And I pray that the purpose is revealed. And I pray, Lord God, that you guide her and lead her into an even greater understanding of her purpose and her uh, uh, mission in this life. And I pray, Father, that you bless this conversation, bless us as we go on and talk about your word, and I pray that your spirit would dwell here, and that, hallelujah, that people would hear your spirit through the words that we share. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, audience, but he's got me over here like I'm about to go into worship mode. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was good. <laughs> I'm like tears of water enough. I'm like, don't mm -hmm. cry. Don't cry. You're <laughs> <laughs> no, so um, thank you so much for blessing the conversation. 
Um, we were talking backstage a little bit about how well versed you are in scripture. And I, I know it's a little bit out of your element to throw out and read, you know, right there instead of just flying with what's going on. But um, what has God really placed on your heart in this season when it comes to your music? Uh, so with the music right now, um, I will say, uh, let, let your light so shine before men that they may glorify your work. Uh, they may see your works and glorify your father in heaven. Oof. And the, that's in Matthew, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you it's know. Matthew, like five something. Yeah, five. I think 549. Okay. If I, if I'm right, I say, thank you, Lord. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that would be fantastic. See, th- th- this is what I do. I say, I go to Google. I say, let your light so shine. <laughs> <laughs> and Google pull it right up for me. Oh, man. See, that's what we need to do right now. Sorry, I didn't understand. Uh-oh. Are you oh, talking well, to Google right now? <laughs> look, the Google, Google is trying to interrupt this conversation, but we ain't going to let it happen. <laughs> Uh, 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 Alexa is good for that too. Alexa will interrupt you as well. Matthew five sixteen actually. There you go. I thought it was fourteen, yeah. but I was like, I'm looking, I'm looking. So yes, and I have the NASB version, folks. So I'm gonna go ahead and read that. It's let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. You almost had it to a T, brother. To oh, a T. Man. I tell you, hey, <laughs> hey. See, you that's know? what we're called to do. We're supposed to write it on the tablet of our heart and practice yes. it, and it yes. becomes where it just comes yes. out. Yes, I'm telling you exactly, <laughs> exactly. And and so when 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 you're having a heart posture like that, this this is what I don't really hear being taught too well in modern Christianity. Heart posture is god's intention of you being filled with the holy ghost when you're filled with the holy spirit you're supposed to be transformed by the renewing of your mind into a certain level of consecration a certain level temperature of doctrine temperature of intimacy but if you allow that there's so many you know words and so many doctrines and isms that are literally cooling the fire down and the Holy Spirit wants to get hot, wants to get hot, want, to, want you to start, you know, laying hands and, and prophesying and doing this. But if you keep listening to these people that say, oh, there's no more prophecy, there's no more tongues, there's no more this, there's no more that. You keep listening to these people, it's going to throw a bucket of hot, uh, a bucket of ice on your fire. And, it, and it's sad. God is very concerned about the heart posture. And, and when the heart posture is right, Everything else flows out of it. Yeah, it's interesting. Two words stuck out to me immediately. It was consecration, which is like a huge topic. And I don't know if a podcast show would even encompass that particular topic. Mm. But um, And then posture. I mean, it's interesting because there's a lot of people that don't even have good posture physically so right that look like my heart posture now i'm sitting here like accountability like am i sitting right like i'm so <laughs> sitting like a cat and <laughs> you gotta keep the back straight <laughs> right so like yep. we don't want to do the same thing though with our heart and our walk with god we don't want to mm-hmm. be slouching i mean come mm-hmm. on <laughs> Come on. I don't want to be a hunchback in my walk with God. (laughs) Absolutely. And and the thing is uh, about about it is um it's it is counterintuitive. I I liken some some of this walk to being on white water rapids. And you're trying to navigate through. There's some waters that are very choppy and there's some waters that are very tranquil. And you you have to navigate through with wisdom from the word of God. Wisdom is how you navigate. A lot of people are not navigating through, they're reacting to. And that is not what we've been called to do. We've been called to identify whatever it is and navigate through it according to wisdom from the word of God. 
Right. Yeah, that is truth. You know, um, reacting, not re- you know, is not responding, and that right there yes. is what it boils down to. If we choose to like step step back and really evaluate, discern, and properly yes. analyze what's going on around us, then we can respond appropriately and not have a knee jerk reaction. I mean, that's a big deal to to really pull out of that. I just had a friend sit there and highlight four different points of responding, and it was just accountability Mm. questions but he was like how are you responding why are you responding the way you are you know and and as it pertains to god are you responding to god in the right manner or Mm. and then are you responding to your circumstances as well in the right manner so that's interesting because it's true you know it doesn't matter what your circumstances are we still need to respond according and according to the will of god and so it's quite interesting and and so when it when it comes to the music, you know the the issue is, you know I I have a lot of friends in the arts. Uh, one of my more famous friends, I hope I get to meet him again, is Jonathan McReynolds. Uh, you know I actually know his family, and you know everybody knows who John McReynolds is. Uh, but you know he is uh, a great example of what honesty can do in music when you look in look at his songwriting it's very honest it's very it's very you know you know bare all right but what i see a lot of my friends in the christian you know music industry you know it's uh i'm all fine for you struggling all right everybody struggles with something at least struggle all right. Don't succumb to it. Don't live out of it. You know, struggle with it, but don't just, you know, uh, all right, this is just me. Right? No. We're, we're called to grow in maturity and eventually the Lord will give us strength. <laughs> I'm a testament to that. He'll, he will give you strength eventually. You know, it, it's just, it's a matter of honesty with him and with yourself. And if you're honest, you will find God. That's his promise. When you seek me with your whole heart, you will find me. And and honesty is a scary place. If we're honest, it's a scary place because it means I cannot hide. I am literally vulnerable and I hate that feeling. And music that is written out of a place of vulnerability uh, historically has been some of the best music. Right. If you look at some of the songs where people are like, man, you know, I feel like dying, you know what I'm saying? Or even, you know, or, or an artist, right? A lot of the artists that you see today, you uh, innocuously or unknowingly know their whole life story because of how vulnerable, how, like, I heard that, I was like, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> uh, you you know that life story because of the honesty and integrity in their heart when they're ready. Right. Well, and it's interesting because um, I and I just encourage any musicians or artists that are listening, songwriters alike, to to really make sure that you're careful about your testimony because you know your um, your testimony is uh, is something that everyone sees you know um and our walk in and of itself we're not supposed to do anything that uh, messes with our witness you know and and so yes um, wow and so that in and of itself is huge right now um there is some a few things that's going on in the media right now in the music oh, industry yeah. that you know Crazy. it's just it's due to choices and that's what it boils mm. down to. I mean, you're either going to choose the world or you're going to choose, you know, to be a light you know, to others around you. Yes. And what does that look like in action really is the question of the day. You know, it's, it's, yes. how do we do that? You know, and, and how do we glorify God and all we do and in all our ways as Christians in the music industry. So here's how you do it. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. And here's the solution. You do it by get by dying to it. You listen, my deacon challenged me. He challenged me so bad. And it, it cut me to the deacon said, 
Did Leland Phil Pot die to the music industry? No. I was like, oh my God. Wow. <laughs> you have to make yourself of no reputation. You have to, you have to fully, fully lay it on the line for God. Say, God, if you bless it, amen. But I am not going to break my back trying to compromise the gospel message just to get attention. Uh, now, you know, there are some people that I, you know, I give a pass to, that does not mean Jesus has given a pass to, but you know, I, I hear rappers like Kendrick Lamar, Chance the Rapper, Justin Bieber, where they have some Jesus-ish messages, you know, and then they talk about weed the next and talk about girls the next, you know, but I have to give them a pass because they might not understand that, you see what I mean? Oh, there's another thing. We've got to be careful not to be passing no judgment on people because we each have our own walk and we're each in a different season yes. in our lives and we have no idea what others are going through and what God's teaching them in those seasons. Yes. I mean, for me, it, it grieves the Holy Spirit within me to hear mm. any type of cursing words. And I don't know, mm -hmm. I can't explain to you how heavy the conviction is on my heart if I accidentally were to use one oh my gosh i would be like mortified yeah it would be yeah. grieving me i mean it would just yes. be like this just broke my heart well and then on yes. top of that you couple that with prayers like lord break my heart for what breaks yours and then you're just asking for it <laughs> right <laughs> which is why i don't ask i don't put those prayers no more <laughs> those are big I, I, you know I, I i do i do i pray you know I, I, you you do have to come to uh, Damascus roads and decision points with the Lord, uh, because the Lord listen. The Lord is not going to release the blessing over your life if you're not prepared for it. You have to be a, a certain way before you really walk into the actual blessings of God. Because I'm telling you, when God starts, He don't stop. He don't stop. It's just one after the other after the other. And and the, and the Lord is looking to and fro, to and fro on the earth, looking for leaders. Who, who will go for us? And that's when Isaiah says, send me, I'll go. And we need people that's ready to, to take the responsibility of being a light in this world. Because it's, it's not just, oh, I'm a light. Yeah, no. It's a, it's a, the enemy who is the devil, who is the prince of the air, who, you know, for people that do not know, you know, that we do have an adversary out here and he is trying to steal, kill and destroy. But Jesus has come in John 10, 10, that we might have life and that more abundantly. And we need to understand that it is a war that we're fighting. It's not just us trying to be goody two shoes. No, 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 no. This war is very real, and this war is, is for every soul of mankind. The soul of everyone hangs in the balance. That's why podcasts like this is so important, and other shows like it, because people need to hear the word that will save their soul, save their eternity from hell. And the only way is through Jesus Christ. Oh, my God, the only way. Is through Jesus Christ. So when we we understand that we have an enemy, and we we understand that uh, when when we're not postured correctly, the enemy will have room, and that is that is when stuff gets dangerous. If our heart posture is not upright in heart, upright in heart. That's what the scriptures say. That's what King David says. Upright in heart. When, when when we're upright in the heart, the enemy ain't got no room. But as long as he got some temptation, he can use. And, 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 and keep in mind, the scriptures also say men are led away with their own lust. Mm. Yeah. That is that is the door opener there. That is that's the crack in the wall. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh and the pride of life. And, and with with the, <laughs> I was like, he's gonna list them, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. And, and so when we when when those things are in the heart, 
this is this is what short circuits the blessings. This is what what causes you to go through seasons of darkness, seasons of loss, because being led away of your own lust instead of being led by the Holy Spirit. And, and so in this now to really tie it in to the current state, I, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to st- phrase it in a way. This is already reality, whether you believe it or not. Right. This spiritual warfare is, is present and real, especially in music, especially in music. Well, you I know, mean, come on now, tell them what the devil started out being. He was, you know, ain't that right? Superman. I mean, come, come on. on. <laughs> you don't think he's gonna L- lungs are organs? Okay, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, beautiful voice, choir director. All right, and and it got to his head. And it got to his head, and and look, and and now we see the same pattern in all the industries, let alone the music industry, but in all of them, in in every single one of them, the higher you go, the more anti Christ they become, and it is very sad, very sad. I had a previous guest that literally delved into the other side of things on That's the right. education aspect of it. So this is just building upon that for the audience. It's it's mm-hmm. going to be good. Um, so, you know, I, uh, I really want to get back to this being led by the Holy Spirit because, you know, we can't uh, be the light if we don't Love that. receive the light. You know, and yes. So, <laughs> so what does that look like on a on a day to day to you as, awesome. as a music producer yielded to the Holy Spirit? You know, what does that awesome. look like? So um, I'll, I'll say let's just take a, you know, more general look and just as a person. Right. Ooh. What does it mean to be led by the Holy Spirit as a person? Okay. And the answer is I cannot tell you how you are led by the Holy Spirit. I can only tell you how I am led by the Holy Spirit. That is how personal and unique every single experience is. But I can give you some rules of thumb as to, all right, that's God, that's the enemy, that's God, that's the enemy. That's called discernment. And this is uh, over time exercising your senses to discern between good and evil. It's over time. It's over trials, right? Trials and tribulations. That's not just to torment you. Amen. As as painful as that is, but it's to exercise your senses to discern between good and evil. You know, and people don't like exercising though. Come on. Oh, my, oh. <laughs> oh. And that's a flesh thing. Come on. Now. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> just, just lay in the bed. I could go on that bed right there and just lay down. And, you know, and God and, and destiny. Oh, here we go. Destiny and purpose is not passive. You will not be able to get to the good, acceptable and perfect will of God laying on your butt. It don't happen. It doesn't. You've got to you, You've <laughs> got to go out here and subdue this earth. And the only way you'll be able to do that is if you're led by the Holy Spirit. So how do you do that? I think the, oh, in Jesus' name, I think the first place is a place of surrender. Surrender. You got to say, Lord, my life is not my own. This life, I can't do it. I, I, if you don't come in my life, I can't do this anymore. You, you've got to be here. Lord, help me. And this is what every babe, this is what everybody has to say. This is what you say when you don't know a lick of scripture. You say, Jesus, please help me. And and that is where it begins. But as you mature, you have to go from surrender to submission. That's different. Submission is, yes, the beating of the flesh into subjection, but it is also the submitting of every cause to the cause of Christ. The problem with music is that it is a very infamously selfish, uh, selfish industry, selfish profession. Uh, you know, I mean, just infamously. Uh, well, look at just what you do as an artist. You're literally on stage 
with lights on you mm-hmm. and you're in front of an entire audience and everybody's looking to you i mean yeah. if you don't take that step to say don't look at me look at god yes <laughs> and, and you, and you it'll, it'll get to you god in me you yes <laughs> absolutely and, and 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 so when when you when you're surrendered and you're submitted and then let's let's also keep in mind experiences experiences spiritual experiences and i'm not just talking about you know uh, smoking weed surrounded by aura crystals on top of a mountain all right that's not a spiritual <laughs> experience i mean i'm sorry movies say it is i, I don't sorry. have personal experience in it but I movies mean, you know <laughs> yeah you, you, you chant you got the nami a whole good kill you got the incense and the beads and it's like i'm sorry but that's not a spiritual experience you're just getting high it's all right. It's like we're telling me the the words that just came out of your mouth. I don't even understand what they were. <laughs> I, I never even heard of that stuff. <laughs> you're like, what is he talking about? Wow. <laughs> Somebody knows what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I'm, so, it's I'm so... in the middle of nowhere mm-hmm. here, people in Oklahoma, rural area. I mean, I don't, this stuff is all Greek to me. And Come on. Hebrew, Hebrew Bible Greek. Come on. <laughs> not not in the translation, not in the concordance. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't wait to I can't wait to hear this back. <laughs> so uh a spiritual experience as in one that is initiated by the Holy Spirit. Uh the scriptures are very clear as one one uh evidence is the speaking of tongues or the new language or the heavenly language of the prayer language. Now, I myself have not, I can't say I have not encountered tongues, but it, is, it has not been an experience enough to pray in tongues on command. Like that is, you know, that for some people, that's a gift where they can say, all right, pray in the spirit, you know, bottom eyes and shit about a Honda and they're just going in tongues and they're they gone. All right. Now, I myself, I am, I am, you know, let's, I am prophetic. And if I can turn that on. You so hesitated to like label be, it. That was so because, funny. because, you know, <laughs> I understand, especially if you look at this election cycle and, and all that mess. Oh, yeah. well, the well, prophetic that, ministry. <laughs> uh, I tell you, Lord help. Uh, but you know, well, I can, I can turn that on. About the prophecies too that we um, listen to and hear just for anybody mm-hmm. that's out there on the listening side, you know, it literally cautions us in the Bible um, to be wary of that and to be cautious and to use discernment. And you can't use discernment if you're not in the word. You can't use yes. discernment if you don't know God, you don't know what his you haven't practiced these things to prove what is good and acceptable and pleasing in his sight. And, and yes. so you just have these steps, like he's sort of trying to explain right now on how to, how to do that. Um, and how, yes. how to obtain those, those things, those heart posture things that will allow that, that communication with God through the Holy spirit yes. and surrender to and submission to Jesus Christ as our Lord. And yes. all those moving parts have to work together and it's like a little puzzle and it's self-explanatory too i mean the bible literally tells you how to do all this stuff it's like yes it does c d e f g all the way through z and here you go yeah there you go and and will you will you put in the time the time the time jesus said in isaiah he says it in revelation come and buy without money the only way you can buy it without money is with your time. That's true. I can I can see your heart now, posture. Now I'm gonna have to go to like <laughs> come and buy without time. I need to go find that scripture because I'm gonna be like meditating on that one. <laughs> so so uh, come come and buy, buy without, without money. money. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so so it's the the time you put in fastings. Oh, you you don't like that f word. That's the real f word. <laughs> Fasting, fasting, no, fasting, okay, and not this social media fast. Oh, I'm gonna leave Twitter alone. Uh, Twitter, 
Ugh. No, man, ditch that food. <laughs> ditch that food for 12 hours. Get, give me 21 days of that. Give me three days of that. Give me five days of that. You know, if it, it, look, give me 40 days of that. And that, you, you want to see a difference? You're going to see a difference. And, you know, fastings, studying, not just reading. No, you know, you read the scripture, you memorize it, you close it. No, the God, man, come, let us reason together. That is what the scripture says. Come, let us, you and fa Father, God, let us reason together. So he wants you to meditate, ruminate. Let us whirl around. Let the word and the wisdom of God go in your mind and repeat and, 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 and put the pieces together. And then the Holy Spirit will start talking. Holy Spirit will say, look yeah. at this. Yeah, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but it even says, like, think on these things. And Philippians yes. sits there and says that. It's talking about meditating on his word. And he literally lists, like, a whole slew of things that you could classify to discern what you're supposed to be thinking about and what you're not supposed to be thinking wow. about. And here's the bucket. Look at that. <laughs> wow. Wow. But look at that. It's the same thing with the fruit of the spirit. I mean, you can sit mm. there and look at that as well. Galatians 5 talks about the good buckets versus whatever mm, is not in those come good on. buckets is in the come bad on. buckets. It's not that complicated. <laughs> wow. Look at that. Look yeah. at that. And, and so yeah. when you do that, th this is this is how you grow. And check, watch. This is how you grow so you'll win the next fight. Because the mature, the test is how you know you really got it. The test is, is the fire is how you're transformed. Jesus says, ye must be salted with fire. What, what good is salt that has lost its flavor? It has no purpose but to be cast out and trodden upon by men. You know, the rock salt we use in, you know, for the ice. That's it. If you lose your fight, your flavor, your, your seasoning, your, your pizzazz for Jesus, it, it's just rock salt. You're supposed to be the salt of the earth that makes this earth palatable to God. That's one. And two, that is preserving this earth from destruction and utter corruption. The Christian is the only thing pre preventing God from releasing his unmitigated wrath on the earth. That is what the Christian is. People, and pe if, if you don't study, you won't know that. And you're still sinning. The only reason why you're sinning is because you don't get it. If you got it, you would run far away from whatever it is. Women, men, other women, other men, drugs, alcohol, uh, pettiness, anger. You would run. You would run if you really understood. Right. And, and so, and because so because of all that, that 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 stuff. It, bad buckets, that's being led by the flesh and by sin. Being led by the Holy Spirit, that surrendering, that submission, that time, and which gets you to a place of urgency and consecration where you know, all right, this is a war. This is not a game. I've got to be on point every day. And when you get to that point, that's when God say, all right, I do this. And that, and I, and I got, and I've got testimonies, Miss Metzler. Of, of being used in the street and ain't no i ain't bishop nobody i ain't suffragan elder bishop the third district elder <laughs> nothing all right you're just a regular just old a person. regular guy <laughs> and with, with that that the lord has been working on for a long time well let, let's just say it this way he's a regular guy that said that word send me Mm. Here I oh, am. I like that. Send me. Wow. He's one of those. <laughs> be one of those. They one of those. <laughs> God's looking for people he can use. That, wow. You know, and he can't do that without you saying it's okay to yes. do that. You know. And yes. So you you got to ask for the assignments, man. <laughs> yes. And so when it comes to the music industry, um, 
I'm I'm afraid that the same issue in all facets of culture, uh, if you know, I know this is a bit deep here, but if you remember the seven mountain revelation from Daniel, those seven mountains represent the facets of facets of culture, uh, government, education, entertainment. I'm not going to go into all of them, but the, the facets of culture are represented in those seven mountains. And so uh, we, we, we have leadership, leadership that whose yeses aren't as solid as they could be. No, well, there is no like in between on that, though. Even on that scripture, your yes is yes. Your no is no. Yes. Anything else is sin. Oof. Let's, Oof. Be, let's be real. It's Oof. like black and white right there, people. Like mm. it's, it's yes is yes. No is no. Anything else is sin. That's the, scri- the scripture. And, and, and it is, you know, I I feel <laughs> sympathetic. <laughs> Not at all. I, I, I don't. But you know, I I have to because the the way this worldly Christianity is set up, they'll cut you off. They will chop your head off. It's 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 worldly. It's worldly. And uh, and and they and you live by the Holy Spirit, and they say, "Oh, when God ain't say that, boy, can you even hear? Do you even hear the Lord?" I I'm telling you, I have experience of talking with leadership that have shut their ears from the Holy Spirit and they're leading a mega church. Well, and I've done it on a local level, had those candid conversations and just blatantly asked elders and pastors, like, what's your stance on the Holy Spirit? Mm. <laughs> it's like, mm. just if you, if you don't have a firm foundation rooted in all three, Jesus, yes, the Father, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Then we're having issues here because Scripture says that the the Helper will be sent. Uh, yes, you're not. I am leaving, but I will be sending someone in my place. And it's the yes, helper. and what does the Helper yes. do? He guides and counsels us, and he teaches yes. us in all things in the Scripture. And so, if you take him out. You take out teaching and you take out uh, understanding and knowing the son and the father. And so you can't do that because then there's nothing left to teach because the teachers wow. that are of this world are not in his will and his way and they don't know and, him. And, and I'll be like, what are y'all teaching from? I'll be, I'll be like, what are y'all saying? And what they're saying is religion. Religion. Yep. And this is where a lot a lot of children of God are caught in the circle of religion. It's a cycle. And, and the cycle is going to repeat and repeat and repeat until somebody, amen, with some courage and some Holy Ghost, say in the name of Jesus, and, and come and prophetically break them out of that cycle and so they can hear what the Lord is saying today. And listen, if I, if I do have some liberty right now, I, I the think Lord. That we're just letting it flow, man. Just go. <laughs> that was literally my words for this year. On wow. And everything. And like, hey. Let it go and let it flow. And that's. Come on. Then, I, then he's like, start a podcast show. And I'm like, okay, let's do this. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so. Go ahead. So the Lord is. We're going to put that back. We're going to. We're going to put back. Let, letting God flow. In the music, we're gonna put that back. One person that's very good at that is Todd Delaney. Very good at that. Uh, I'm I'm not, I'm sure you've heard of Upper Room. Mm-hmm. Upper Room, the uh, that that ministry. I forgot where they're um, based at, but they you know they they have a song called X Y Z song Spontaneous, where they just they just start flowing. You know, and, and this is when we put that back. This is how chains get broken. You know, I, I know, listen, I know the Lord, listen, my father in heaven is strict. All right. I understand this. He, he, he's got to have it a certain way. You can't watch this. You can't go there. You can't, you can't do that. You can't talk like that no more. Can't be doing that. You know that he's strict, but once you get into relationship with him and get to the freedom part, then you're able to flow, but a- a- until you have the discipline set, you can't flow. You you gotta be a disciplined person to be at liberty. It's very counterintuitive, but it it is the case. 
No, he's he's speaking truth. I mean, that obedience is oh. so much better than. Oh my god! You know, it's just there's this. I don't know. There's just blessings abounding at the end just, of obedience. And, and listen, good. and there's no other way. Stop trying to find some other way. The Lord ain't make no other way. Obey, obey. That's it. It's not that complicated. Just be obedient. Uh, children, obey. Called to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And, and, and uh, James, the great theologian James Brown said, Papa don't take no mess. <laughs> Papa don't take no mess. Hey. Yeah, yeah, his grace is sufficient to cover all things. Don't let any condemnation um, or attacks like That's that right. and guilt and stuff to come in uh, for my listening audience, especially for those who don't know the word as well as, you know, some. And so. We don't, you know, we don't sit there and, and discredit the fact that grace covers all sin because Jesus right. died to cover all of that. He overcame the world with all of this, you know, this sin that we were yes. in. But it's not through our works. It's not through, you know, works and faith is good. I'm not saying that, but it's That's not right. through anything that we can earn. You know, we never did to, you know, deserve it to begin with. He paid the price for us all like that and covered it all, but... But Paul sits there and talks. I, I love the passage because he's so dramatic when he says it. But And he says it multiple times. It's not just mm. once in that particular letter. But he's like, you know, uh, shall we continue to sin because grace abounds? And then he says, surely not. He says it like multiple times. He says these lines of examples of what these people are talking about and thinking about and, and thinking are right. And they're continuing in their sinful ways. And he's like saying... Shall we do this? Shall we do that? Shall we do this? Mm. Surely not. Surely not. Surely mm. not. That's not mm. what it, this is. Yes, grace abounds and it covers all things, but that doesn't give us a right. It doesn't give us the exempt card. It doesn't give us a free pass to continue on in what we were doing in our old ways because through Christ, we are a new creation, made new, renewed, you know. And so, anyways, it's just. I don't know. Absolutely, it's just, and, and and it's always and all and it's always need it needs to be said. Once again, there's this pattern of balance, right? Um, uh, I'm I'm gonna share this. Uh, are we are we uh, close to wrapping up? Yeah, we're close to wrapping. All right. <laughs> I, I wanna I wanna share this. You know, with, especially with my brothers and sisters in the art. You know, uh, God is gonna put back the flow in Jesus' name. He's putting back the flow, the flow from the genuine place, the flow from the river of living water that is from the belly. All right. In Jesus name, he's putting it back. And so and listen, I mean, I'm going to share what I heard late, uh, late March 2020 from uh, Prophet Joshua Fowler. God is taking back the seven mountains, all seven of them. Hey, in this decade, all seven of these mountains are being taken for the children of God to show. So God will show himself mighty in the lives of his children. So the world will know. It is Jesus. He is the Lord. He is King of Kings and He is the Lord of Lords. And, and so I wanted to, to Jesus' ears and God Listen. Ears. Yes, 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 yes. Yep. I accept it and receive it. Because that is it, that's the mission, man. A huge revelation through the body as well as those around the body to know Christ. You know, and that that's yes. it right there. That they'll let the eyes of the heart be enlightened. Yes. Mm-hmm. And and I and I and I wanted to share this with you. So, so we see in scripture and in, in the posture, in the relationship, in the walk, there is balance. All right. In the old Testament, the veil that covered the Ark of the covenant was made out of blue, blue cloth, purple cloth, and red cloth. All right. Blue, red, purple. Now we understand our basic art school. Blue and red makes purple. You understand that? Now, when Jesus steps on the scene and his mother, wonderful Mary, said, whatever Jesus tells you to do, do that. Jesus says, we ran, they said, oh, we ran out of wine. And she said, to ask Jesus. And Jesus said, it's not my time, woman. What is you doing? <laughs> That's not what he said, but yeah, and, something like that. <laughs> and, and 
you, you know us black people we love to uh <laughs> you know, a little sauce on the word there um the, the the people bring these giant jugs of water and jesus turns that water into wine and they and the guy said yo this is the best wine once again blue and red we see the water we see the wine let's keep going on the cross jesus i mean tortured for nine hours that is a nine hour ordeal that is how long the passion went nine hours he was beaten for three hours straight and he hung for six hours. It is a nine hour ordeal. Stab, and out of his stab wound comes water and blood. And when he dies, the veil was torn. Now, why did I walk you through these three specific stories? The balance. What people need to understand in order for the veil to be torn and for us to have access into the holies of holies, which I believe is, is mentioned in Ephesians. We have access to the supernatural realm that has been given to us by Jesus Christ. Here it is. Through water and blood and both. And both. We need the word of God and we need the spiritual experiences of God. And we need both of them in tandem. And then that's when the veil tears and we have access and we can walk with God. There's a balance. There are times where, where the, Lord, the Lord has a heavy hand on you. Where you're convicted about the littlest things. You're convicted about the littlest things. And, 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 and you, uh, you know, it, it's, it's almost as if, man, you're bullying me. What's going on? And, and there are times where the Lord just lets you go, forgives you. You know, and, and, you know, and, and there, there's a move, a balance. You, you will feel it in your soul. But when you have the word and you're open to your own spiritual experiences that the Lord will give to you, boom, now you're operating out of access and not out of lack. You're operating out of access and not out of worry. Like, I don't, I don't care what I got going on. I, hey, in Jesus name. And that thing will change. Because I know I got access. And, and so I want to encourage everybody listening. I want to encourage, I mean, everybody on the sound of my voice. The, and when you have the word of God and you're open to your to the spiritual experiences that God is, is doing in your life. And listen, and, and I know we hate the war and we, we the struggle, the warfare, right? The, uh, the thoughts, all right? The thoughts, the Lord. Uh, likens the thoughts that come against us to darts, rain, wind, flood, fire. He, he calls them the elements. These are the elements that try to beat against the house of our minds. And so God ha has given the word to be our protection. When we meditate on the word, when we put our mind on Jesus Christ, when we go into worship, it's the protection from the elements. And, and as much as we hate the elements, Jesus said, ye must be salted with fire. The struggle. It's the struggle that makes you a strong Christian, that makes you, oh man, it's dope. That, that, that unlocks authority and power. And, and so when you, when you have all that going, the balance, the experiences, the word of God, and you see, there's never a boring day with Jesus when you got all that going on. When, when you've been, when you grooming, when you've been groomed, I mean, it, it's never a boring day with the Lord. And, and so that, that is how you, listen, that is how you walk in that consecration. That's how you walk in that personal place from the heart level with Jesus Christ. And this is how the best music comes out. That's, that's where the good music is coming from, from the heart level. All right. Well, and that's that vulnerability, you know, you went full circle back to being vulnerable and, you know, being transparent, but you've got to be that way with the Lord before you can be that way with other people. You've got to learn how to do that intimately with God first. And what does that look like? Because otherwise you're blocking the blessings that could be. 
in your writing to someone else's heart. You know, again, it's not about you. It's about what God wants to do in and through you. And yes. it, it does work on your heart while it's ministering to others. But the whole point, yes. the end goal as a songwriter, as a musician, as someone who's producing and getting that out there, the content of God's word out there to glorify his name is ultimately not about you. And I don't wow. know who wow. needs to hear that, but yes, yeah, somebody wow. needs to hear it. And that wow. vulnerability is That's powerful. Key. Wow. Powerful. But yeah. Powerful. So <laughs> powerful. I can't wait to hear this back. Powerful. Powerful. Man, brother, I appreciate your time. I know I, I can probably sit here and talk to you for a long time, but <laughs> it's good. It's good. But see, that's that. Um, and I encourage people to uh, seek others that are kingdom focused and are yes. uh, mission minded and want to be yes. set apart. That don't Absolutely. blend in, that want to stand out and want to share God's word. And they're the first person to tell you that God loves you. Because in that, when you strengthen your circle, when you strengthen that, you know, one chord is easily broken. Two chords, to, they can defend themselves. And three chords. Eight. It's not so easy. Yeah. Enemy not so easy. Stand a chance, but no weapon formed against you will prosper. Regardless. Oh, but still, <laughs> there's so many. Play the organ. <laughs> I know. There's hey. so many promises in the Word of God that you can stand to, and I just encourage you to find someone that has an arsenal that knows how to, you know, battle against the things of this world, and knows that they know that they know that Jesus Christ has overcame it and can stand in authority against those things that come. So. Um, that's my two cents to close out. Wow. <laughs> but, Amazing. But yeah, so uh, Amazing. you want to join me in prayer so we can close this out? Oh yeah, you, you got it. All oh, right. dude, I got it. Is that is that you? You got I, it? I'll you got it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, it's going to be a good prayer. Hey, come on, amen. <laughs> All right, audience. Thank you so much. God bless you. Um, God, thank you so much for this day. We just appreciate this visit and appreciate the opportunity to come before you. To be coming before your throne is this honor. And we just uh, want to come to it in a heart posture of submission before you. We want to lay it all at the cross. We don't want it anymore. Any of these worries, any stress, anything that is coming up against these uh, audience listeners, we just want to protect their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We want to, we want you to just implant them with your word and just really just minister to their heart. Um, you know, bring that light into their situation. Say, you know, this is this. You know, you said that nothing that is that is hidden in the darkness will stay hidden. That your light will bring it to clarity and to the forefront and. Your children will get to see what's going on around them, you know, and that is through your light, Father. And just we just ask that we just want that floodlight to come into everybody's situation, protect them, lead them and guide them through those situations. Give them the tools you promise to equip us for all of our needs to the good works that we're called to, Father. So we just ask you to equip to provide, to protect, just as you promised you will. And we glorify your name for that. We thank yes. you and we praise your name for that. And we accept yes, it. And it is our yes, truth God. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, God. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Got some battle gear on on that one. <laughs> 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 I'm just going to bless my audience with battle gear right now. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> if you guys want to study, though, um, just because of what our topic is today, I encourage you to study Ephesians 6, which is the armor of God. And you'll find all of the many tools um, that you can guard your heart and mind with and equip yourself with. Um, through that passage and meditate on it figure out what each piece means and what god is teaching you in this season on what that means because he will he will teach you so. Amen. all right so go ahead leland if you could just um give all your links like how can they connect to you as a producer as a songwriter as you know the whole shebang as a music publisher Absolutely. everything so yep you can find me online uh, you could just Google Leland Philpot, and that's the simplest way. But um, I'm on all streaming platforms. Uh, I have a podcast as well, and it is called the Babel Scatter Podcast. And who knows, maybe I'll have to invite Mitz Metzler for an episode. I didn't know and, you had a podcast. Uh, we'll have a, what are you absolutely. Yeah. 
<laughs> and cool. uh yep absolutely and um uh, yep uh youtube is popping instagram is popping oh uh i just launched uh my new merch table uh i have new hoodies t-shirts we're gonna have leggings joggers i mean oh and it's gonna look oh so very cool very anime very kawaii all right, so uh, just just stay tuned with your boy. Uh, either type in Babel Scatter or Leland Philpot, and you'll find me. Awesome. And, of course, I'm going to provide all the links. So you guys be ready. Just click that link and go visit him, follow him, you know, support him, encourage him, share out that stuff. That's all that, you know, you just spread it out. Let's build the kingdom. That's what we're called to do. So, all right, you guys, thank you so much. Don't forget to tune in next week for another episode of the RSVP show. And we just appreciate your time. God bless you and know that God loves you. Bye. Don't forget to connect with Leland on his self-titled YouTube channel and on all social platforms at Leland Philpot.